Welcome, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is the Peace Talk, a show brought to you by Gain Peace, a Dawah organization and outreach department of ICNA, Islamic Circle of North America. I'm here once again with Dr. Sabil, and it is your brother Yasser Aslam. And a special shout out to several people who have been calling me recently. Thank you so much for joining the show. I, get, I sent you guys the links. And um, let's see how you're doing on this Wednesday, June 24th, 2020. Dr. Sabil, how are you? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you and to the viewers. You know, Yasser, alhamdulillah, uh, it's such a blessing uh, that we are living uh, in Chicago. Rain is on and off, weather is getting hot. But we mm -hmm. should say that, you know, we should never complain. Uh, any challenges and trials that we go through, it is uh, a purpose in there. As long as we are patient and persevering, there is a reward in it. So Alhamdulillah, right. life is going on and may Allah keep us guided and protected and make us ambas ambassadors of peace to humanity. I mean, I mean, in fact, actually, I've been having a couple phone calls with uh, Brother Mike, who's joining us today. He, um, you know, we were having some interesting conversations. He, you know, he's uh, some troubles that he's gone throughout his life. And literally the topic that we were discussed on Monday was what he was watching. He was watching some Dr. Zakir Naik videos and he was doing some comparative religion between Christianity and Islam. He was raised Catholic and now he's changing his faith and he's moved about a little bit. So, you know, he he's requested some material and in the meantime, he's just been binge watching our videos and Dr. Zakir Naik videos. So, Brother Mike, thank you so much for continuing this effort and for being curious and thinking. Because think about it. We all have to be very open-minded to accept new ideas. The sign of an intelligent person is that you can take an idea that you don't agree with, that you don't might disagree with, or just might not sit easily, but still entertain it. Still bring it into your mind. Think from a perspective of, you know, put yourself in someone else's shoes and think outside of the box. That's how you know our faith teaches us to be open-minded and, you know, to ponder about, you know, creation and the world and alhamdulillah. So, Dr. Sabil, um, if you want to just recap what we talked about last week or Monday. Well, so Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most the most beneficent and the most merciful. On Monday, two days ago, we had a show, and the topic of the show was really quite interesting, especially to the Jewish and our Christian friends. The topic was Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So we looked into the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we identified certain passages, certain verses in there that speaks about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What did Prophet Moses said? What did Prophet Abraham before him? What were the prophecies that Abraham was given and his sons and his children and his progeny? They were given by God and God made prophecies and God made uh, blessings to the progeny of Abraham, peace be upon him. Then we looked at uh, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, how he mentioned that certain prophet would be coming after him, uh, that who would be similar to Moses. And then we looked at Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, that what were some of the prophecies that he meant to his people and how those prophecies, they fit none other than Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So anyone can go to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook page, and you can go and see uh, that episode for 30 minutes. And obviously these are 30 minute episodes. We're not covering in depth, but we are touching upon it and we are giving enough references for all of us to go back and look at them and then to come to Islam and then realize that yes, all of these wonderful individuals, they were messengers and prophets. Their main mission was to invite humanity to Allah. And if you love them, if you love Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, then you should follow their faith. Their faith was submission to the creator that equals in Arabic to Islam. Yes, I mean, and so subhanAllah, just brother Mike, if you're watching, thank you so much. We've had some interesting conversations on the phone and, you know, he was commenting on you, Dr. Sabil. He called both you and me handsome. And he is, like I said, <laughs> you know what? And he was saying that, you know, he's 58 years young. I want all of us to keep sure. that in mind. But don't, don't view age, don't view any of these things. And literally perfect segue in what we were talking about. He was actually talking about his background and he, how he was looking for peace and how there was constant conflict. 
He left, you know, he had some history with, um, you know, with places over, overseas in Iraq and things like that. And literally he was, he, you know, he was, I kind of explained to him Jizzy and a few other things. And he was just very much interested. And, um, you know, let, let, we're, we're going to talk about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how he was a peacemaker, how literally there's conflict. Conflict is something that is existent between countries. It, 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 it's a part of our human experience. Think about it this way. A husband and a wife, they can have conflict. Divorce is allowed. It is something halal, right? It is, it's not permissible. You know, it's, it is the most hated of the permissible. But think about it. Two people can disagree. As long as we have various ideas, as we were talking about earlier, there's going to be disagreements. So conflict is a part of human thing. Two people cannot get along. Two families cannot get along. Two, two cities cannot get along. Two ideas cannot, just like that. So there's, there's conflict is two countries, war, all these things are there. And how Prophet Muhammad, who's a mercy to mankind, please check out our other video, how he, as the perfect human being, as the perfect role model, the seal of the prophets, how he, how Prophet Muhammad was a peacemaker. So Dr. Sabeel, yes. the floor is all yours. Alhamdulillah. So many of you, obviously you may have heard the word Islam. So it's important for us to know that yes, Islam means submission to one God. But Islam is also derived for, from the word Salama. And from that same three letters, you can, you can also derive the word peace, Salam. So it's important that the word Islam itself, it has a background in the context of peace. One of the names of God, Allah, is as salam That means he's the source of all peace. When Muslims, when we greet each other, we say assalamu alaikum. That means peace be upon you. And this is a greeting of people in paradise. So anything that we do, we are, we are revolving around peace. That is the mission of a Muslim. That means to submit to the creator. And in return, we have peace and contentment in our hearts, in our actions, in our behavior, in our thoughts. And ultimately, the ultimate peacemaker, who is the creator, would be happy with us. And he will, by his mercy and peace and forgiveness, he will enter into eternal peace. So I think we need to, we need to mention that uh, overall concept of peace coming from God himself and the name of religion, Islam is reflective of it, our greetings reflective of it, and how it should be reflective in our actions and coming from, obviously, the prophets and the messengers. So that's, I think, the first and the most important point. When it comes to mm -hmm. peace, it's not just about, you know, we are doing something peaceful. No, we have to look at the overall concept of peace. Secondly, it's important for us to know that to guide humanity and for humans to, ju to do justice and peace and to root out evil and to enjoy good, God appointed by his mercy, by his guiding and loving nature, he appointed messengers and prophets. And the duty of these messengers and prophets is to connect humanity with the creator. And then to also do justice. And the outcome of justice is peace in the society. So again, it's important. The mission, the role of the messengers and prophets is ultimately mm -hmm. to bring peace to humanity. And obviously, uh, some yeah. of you who are watching, you may know the names of some of the messengers and prophets. Noah and Abraham. Uh, Moses and Jesus, Abraham, uh, I mean, uh, Ishmael and Isaac, David and Solomon, peace be upon all of them and many, many more who are mentioned in the Quran and many more who are not mentioned in the Quran. But as a Muslim, we believe in all of them. Mm -hmm. So that's the second important concept, right? In the topic of peace, that that was the mission of every single messenger and every single prophet. Mm -hmm. Third important concept when we look into peace is that what was reflected in the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because the Quran mentions Yasir, as we have discussed this many, many times, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord, our maker, the creator mentioned in chapter 21, verse number 107, that Allah has sent the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, for as a mercy to all of the mankind, to all of the creation, not just the humans, but to all of the creations, uh, for animals, for the jinns, for the angels, all of humanity, you know, to nature. Uh, he was sent as a peacemaker, as a mercy to all of them. 
So now it's our obligation to reflect and to learn and to implement. What are some of those important ways that Muhammad peace be upon him, that he brought peace to humanity and he brought justice to humanity? All right. So that's number three important concept that when we speak about peace, it's not just something in abstract. We are not thinking of, you know, how should we do it? Our creator has sent us a role model. And that role model's life is being uh, documented. And that do those documents have been preserved. So we can look into them. And now we can, inshallah, God willing, by that knowledge, motivation, inspiration, and Allah's commandments, we can use that knowledge. It's like a prescription pad. Use that knowledge and the prescription pad to treat humanity and treat ourselves. So justice can be done and peace can be evolved. Right. So now in the rest of the episode, Yasser, what we can do is we can look into some of the highlights from the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that how he was a peacemaker and inshallah, God willing. And then if there are any questions coming from our audience, may that be our YouTube audience and Facebook audience, uh, we would like to hear from you. We would like to hear your comments, perhaps your, your questions, anything that you have, we would love to listen from you. Right. Inshallah, God willing. Mm -hmm. So let's proceed with that uh, about some of the highlights from the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now it's important for us when we look into the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, not just the Muslims, not just the Quran, not just the creator, even our non-Muslim scholars, they have wonderful praises have to say when they look into the life of the noble prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. First and foremost, it's important, even the non-Muslims of the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, they used to call him with wonderful titles. They used to give him the title of as sadiq and Al-Amin. That means the most uh, honest uh, and the most uh, trustworthy person. You know, just imagine, like nowadays, you know, summer is out there. If our kids, if they meet some other person on in the playground, for example, they may exchange each, 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 each other's hobbies, each other's, uh, you know, games that they play, uh, video games perhaps, you know, Minecraft and Fortnite and whatnot. But in the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, when, they, when he used to be introduced to in, per, a new person, people used to say that he is a Saudi Khan al -Amin. He is the truthful and the honest person. So that was the caliber of the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we, when we have to follow a noble example like him, we need to make sure that we have credibility. So when we have credibility, then we are, people are receptive to us, what we say. So that's, we, that's when we can have an impact. Second important way that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he was a peacemaker in the society, even before he was uh, appointed as a prophet by the creator at the age of 40. So there, there used to be many disputes that used to happen in Arabia, right? So before Islam was reintroduced in Arabia, there used to be friction on the basis of races and tribes, uh, cultures and economic standards. Uh, people used to dispute. There used to be friction. And unfortunately, Yasser, we are seeing something similar in our society in the 21st century. So one time there was a dispute between the tribes. All of them, they recognize that this, that this uh, structure, which is the Kaaba, they used to honor it. They used to do rituals around it. And they used to connect themselves with the creator or with their idols around this in the context of the structure of the Kaaba. Now, it was becoming really old. The structure of the Kaaba was becoming really old. So they need to construct it or reconstruct it. So what they did was they started the construction and they took out the black stone that was uh, one of the important uh, pieces within the Kaaba. They took it out to construct the Kaaba and now as they finish the construction, now they have to put this back. Now, it's an honor for any person of any tribe or the chief of any tribe. It is an honor for him to put that piece back into the side of the Kaaba, side of this uh, cubicle structure. There was a dispute in there. Now, who should be given that honor? People were fighting. They were disputing. Each tribe was saying, yet, you know, our tribe should be given that honor. It was a 
dispute without any resolution. But then they decided, okay, you know what? Forget about this dispute. The way that we will solve it is we will see that who is going to be walking the first person in the precinct of the Kaaba. And we will consult that person. That person is going to decide. Everyone agreed with that. As they were sitting down, lo and behold, as they watched from far away, they saw this person coming in the precinct of the Kaaba. Everyone, they stood up and they were joyous. And they said, here, here comes Muhammad. Peace be upon him. They were overjoyed because now they realize that Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the peacemaker. He's not going to take the side of this tribe based, based upon the race and nationality and other status. He's going to be a person of equality and justice and peace. That's the reason they were joyous. So then mm -hmm. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he had a solution that was like, you know, totally amazing. He said, you know what? All of you bring a piece of big cloth. And then Prophet himself, he took the black stone and he placed it uh, on the piece uh, of, the, of the cloth. And then he told the tribes, you know, all of you, you hold this cloth from four sides. And all of you lift it up and all of you carry it towards the Kaaba. And they all did and they were all realizing, you know what, this is an amazing solution. And as they brought towards the Kaaba, then the Prophet himself he lifted the black stone and put it on the side of the Kaaba. In that way, he brought peace to the tribes and unity to the people, avoided friction and avoided a war. Excellent example, right? And the people actually were, uh, uh, they took his advice. You know, sometimes what happens is that if somebody does not like anyone, they have excuses not to accept their advice. But everyone was joyous. They were all amazed to accept it, the advice. And they were amazed that this is the person with such a high caliber giving that advice. So that's, um, I would say, a second important mm -hmm. way that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he brought justice and peace and equality in the society. Number second way that we can say Yasser would be that, uh, I mean, the whole life is the life of peacemaker. You know, so one time he went to the city of Taif. This is outside of the precinct of Mecca. And he went there to invite people to worship only one God. So he went on a peace mission. You know, he didn't have any arms. He went with a smile to invite people, you know, worship only one God, follow God's guidance. There would be justice and prosperity and there would be a reward in the hereafter. So he went with that peace mission. Unfortunately, what happened was the people of Taif they did not accept his message. He was not forcing them. He was not compelling. There was now no gun, no sword with him. It was a peace mission. So instead of uh, accepting the message, they not just they rejected the message, they had the children and, and, and other people to actually pick up the stones and stone Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So ultimately, he has to walk out because he was all bloodied and all damaged and all, you know, uh, bruises and scars all, all over his body. Now, obviously, a, just a normal person, their attitude, their psychology would be, you know what, these people are harming me. How can I harm them back? But Yasser, you may know from Sunday school, right? I know from my Sunday school is that so there is a narration. This is documented from the history that God sent an angel and the angel told to Muhammad, peace be upon him in that state that, you know what, God is saying that uh, if you want these people who rejected the message of Islam and these people who caused so much harm to you, God can bring two mountains and crush these people and the whole city under the mountains. At that so time, well. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he stopped that angel and he said, no. Even if these people do not embrace Islam, who knows that they may be their progeny, they may, they may embrace the faith of Islam. So he was so a well. person who avoided conflict avoided any injury, avoided any uh, harm to the people, even his enemies. So he was a peacemaker again in that uh, situation. You know, according to him, that was the that was the most saddest day of his life. Okay. Even then with a smile, he walked out and he prayed for them, right? He prayed for them, very important. And then mm -hmm. later on, as we know, suppose if you travel to Taif today, the whole city of that, the whole city, the whole region actually, they started to submit to the creator because now they realize that, yes, that is the best thing for them to do 
peace in this world and peace in the hereafter. Excellent example. Excellent example. And Dr. Sabir, I know before I want to kind of get to the questions and uh, for of today, but I, just even those two instances enough. Before he was a prophet, the wisdom that he had as a peacemaker, um, you know, with the story of the black stone, the stone that uh, in front of the Kaaba that Prophet Muhammad was on with wisdom, he literally caught, uh, you know, settled the dispute amongst all the tribes by being a peacemaker. And even after Islam, to show his mercy, to show his kindness, I, I want us to think about this. Think about in your life the most peaceful person you know, the pe the peacemaker, whether it might be a relative, a family member, or who literally we've all seen conflicts between people and how someone comes in and with a cool head with a calm head they resolve the issues they settle a truce or a treaty and i mean prophet muhammad peace be upon him especially in that second story that dr sabil mentioned of how on the day of taif actually personally i was thinking about this just a couple days ago the someone had asked me the question if um you were to meet prophet muhammad for about half an hour what would you ask him and my question was this, Ya, ya Rasulullah, how, tell me about how you, how you felt that day because he said that this was the most difficult day from him. It, this was the year of sorrow. He had lost his uncle. He, his wife has passed away. He literally imagined this. You went somewhere to do da'wah. The Prophet Muhammad went with his adopted son Zaid and the children threw stones at him. They drove him out of the town. Not only did they reject the message of Islam, the elders, but they got the children to drive him out and throw stones at him. He was he was physically hurt. He was bleeding. He had like that day when he tried to remove his uh, shoes. You know, he's wearing leather socks. There was blood in his socks. From that's how much he was in pain. And still, when the angel came to him and asked him, um, you know, he had the ability to be vengeful or to you know to spite the people because they had wronged him but no he chose to be merciful he chose to be forgiving that was just his nature inshallah right. let's get to the questions and i see some of the questions on youtube they're actually um, you know i think the the user under the sea is answering some of the questions we love this the dialogue that's happening in the live comments of people answering each other's questions so yes this is a forum alhamdulillah so yes dr Sabil, the question is so so the one explore? question that is uh, that you can see on the monitor is that uh, on your screen can you explain that uh, islam means is it peace or is it submission simple islam means the peace that a person obtains once they submit to the creator mm -hmm. you know it's so, really important that we may be going through many calamities there may be a lot of uh, stress there may be you know a lot of uh, tests and trials we are going through but we know that if these are coming from the creator we have that content that yes, Allah is in control, that he, is, that he is the best of all the guiders. He loves us. And this is just a life of test and trial. So that those thoughts, when they are coming in our mind, that brings us peace. When we are submitting to the creator, not to money, not to fame, not to you know Facebook likes or a person, when we are submitting to the ultimate creator and there's a volunteering, that means that also obtains peace. The outcome is peace. Uh, when we look at the wonderful guidance, the solutions that our creator has for all of humanity, and we know that this is the best of all the guidance and uh, solutions are there for anything that we are going through, humanity is going through, family is going through. And if we obtain those solutions, implement the solutions, ultimate outcome would be peace. So again, those thoughts again will bring a person and a family and the creation peace. So yes, Islam is Islam is derived from the word salama, that means peace, uh, and also submission to the Creator itself is peace. So any which way that you look at it, right? Submission to the Creator, the outcome is peace. If you just want to wrap it up in this short one sentence. So let's uh, give two quick examples uh, again, Yasir. Uh, mm -hmm. from the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him. When he moved from Mecca to Medina, there used to be many Jewish tribes up there. And these Jewish Jewish tribes, they were at, uh, the, at, uh, at the mercy of the Persians and the Byzantine Empire who used to torture them and oppress them and uh, were, were at the brink of extinction, these Jewish tribes. But Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
he wrote a document called the Charter of Medina or the Medina Charter. He dictated that. And in that charter, this is called as the world's first constitution, most inclusive constitution to protect the minorities. In there, he mentioned that the Jews and the Muslims, they would be one ummah, they would be like one community. So this document gave them protection to the Jews and the non-Muslims and the minorities. It gave them identity. It gave them freedoms. Ultimately, it gave them that peace that they need from the oppression of uh, the Byzantine and the Persian Empire. So we can go into detail some other time. And lastly, really important. I mean, there are so many instances of his you know, wonderful life as a peacemaker. When eventually when he came with his companions, uh, to Mecca, you know, for the conquest of Mecca. It was a bloodless conquest. Not a single drop of blood was shed in that conquest. At that point, he had the power, he had the soldiers, 10,000 plus army people. And then the Meccans, they were at his mercy. And uh, he asked them a question, what do you think I will do to you? And they said, you are our brother and we accept the, when we, we expect the best from you. And then he said, you know, today all of you are forgiven. A general amnesty was given to them. So again, he could have taken the revenge, you know, on them because they used to torture him and kill many of his people, many Muslims, and they did all the nasty things to them and his family and his property and the Muslims in general. He could have taken a revenge, a punishment, and that would have been justified in any court of law. But then he gave a general amnesty to them they realized the truth of Islam. They realized that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a true prophet and of their own choice. Because of that peaceful action, they embraced the faith of Islam. So we hope and pray that anyone who is watching this, anyone who is going to watch this later on, we invite them to also look into the noble life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You may be looking for peace. You may be looking for a way uh, for you to get uh, the, the solutions for your problems. You may be looking for the right faith. You know what? Trinity does not make sense to me. Idol worship does not make sense to me. There has to be a creator. What is the right faith? We invite you to investigate Islam. This is the faith that was preached and practiced by every single prophet, every single messenger. And once you do it, once you embrace the faith of Islam, once you start submitting to the creator, you will have peace in this world, inshallah, God willing. And then you will have eternal peace by God's mercy in the hereafter. Ameen, Ameen. And I want to encourage anybody who's watching this, um, please, if you can, don't be shy. I know that, like, you know, we actually get phone calls, alhamdulillah, and we get messages. So I know maybe we might be discouraged by saying, oh, not that many views, not that many comments, but they will come afterwards. There's the live comments, there's the ones after. If you're on the fence, if you need something, if you need some more information, please feel free to call us, right? I, I want you guys to, uh, as best as you can, like, realize that, no, it's, it's, it's this is your choice. No one's making you, La, you know, uh, it, choose for your own. Um, uh, if, if the, uh, and again, the, the question from the user under the sea, is there any good book in English about the life of our prophet? Yes. If you would like a free book on prophet Muhammad, um, here we go. There is right here the we can send this as free literature to any new Muslim or non-Muslim who would like to read, or anyone who's on the fence. This is um, a short biography on Prophet Muhammad. It's not too long. You know, I, you know it's, there's other ones that are very, very long. Like for example, is Prophet Muhammad is probably among the most well-documented people in human history. All his companions, all his disciples. There was a written called the things were written about him. I don't think anyone in history has that many witnesses and, a, and handwritten accounts of who he was. The chain of narration, the Sahih Hadith, and SubhanAllah, the same people who compiled the Quran are the ones who actually you know, gave narrations about Prophet Muhammad. But yes, a short biography, um, if you would like it, you can go to gainpeace.com and uh, request material. And we will gladly and oh, you know, give it to anyone seeking truth. We want you to learn about this great man. We want you to go ahead, take that first step. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. I know sometimes people don't want to say, uh, you know, a comment or anything openly, but it's okay. Make that step. This is just between you and your creator. Learn. 
learn about it. And if, if there is that the inkling that you have the creation, learn about this man who literally was the first one who denounced racism, was the one who established their faith. And there's a, a, a practical example. God didn't just give us revelation. He That generation around Prophet Muhammad, literally God, that's an, a perfect example on how to live a life. Over the past 23 years, imagine having a connection with God. The moment something happens, revelation comes down. It was literally a role model for all of us how to attain justice, how to have peace. And I think uh, we had a question earlier today too about you know peace is more than the absence of war, right? Yes, that's true. And I think sometimes people are very skeptical. And we're going to talk about that in the future. A lot of people bring some allegations against Islam. And you know what? It's not violent. It's not that. We have so much. Dr. Sibyl and I, in future episodes, we're going to talk about that and you know, um, bring awareness to that, that yes, there's a reason it's called gain peace. We want you to have peace in your heart and you know, to have that tranquility that yes, the only way we are really, truly free is when we worship our creator, when we submit to the one who created us and gave us purpose in life, inshallah. Yes, sir. Uh, we can end the show. Uh, there is a there is a quotation I want to share with all of you, and this is coming from Sir George Bernard Shaw. He wrote a book about Islam. It's called The Genuine Islam, way back a few decades ago. In there, he mentioned about Muhammad peace be upon him. He said that I have studied him, means Muhammad peace be upon him, the wonderful man, and in my opinion, so this is George Bernard Shaw is saying. That in my opinion, far from being an antichrist, he must, he must be called as the savior to humanity. I believe that if a man like him were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems in a way that will bring it the much needed peace and happiness. So yes, I would say that humanity needs a person like Muhammad, peace be upon him. The world is suffering. Racism is rampant. But he was the last prophet. He's not coming back. But you and me, we are appointed to carry on the legacy of sharing peace and bringing peace, inviting humanity to the worship of the ultimate peace, who is Allah. Yes. Jazakumallah khairan. Feel free to join us. And if you, like I said, like to request a translation of the Quran, a short biography on Prophet Muhammad, and also, if you have any questions about Islam, also with it, we send 50 qu questions that most people have. The top 50 questions, anything that's on your mind, feel free to call, you know, um, go to gainpeace.com, request the material, and inshallah, you join us again, same time, 6 um, p.m. Central Standard Time, and Monday and Wednesday will be live again. So with that, continue to seek truth, and assalamu alaikum, God's peace be upon you all, wa rahmatullahi, and his mercy. Wabarakatuhu and his blessings. Salam, peace. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.